Hi, God bless and good morning. Welcome everyone to Talk Straight Bible. I give God thanks, glory, and honor for allowing me to wake up in this day and also waking you up for breathing life into us and giving us more of Him and less of this world. In this morning, I want to speak to you how God turns things around and how in our prayer, those simple prayers that we make before the Lord, they are powerful. And I want to bring to you that message or lesson that is in the book of Second Kings chapter 6. I'm going to be reading from verses 16 to 17, and I'm going to reference some of the verses in that chapter and also various verses that I have from other scriptures in the Bible. So let's start with Second Kings chapter 6, verse 16 to 17. And the word of God says, so he answered, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Today, I want to speak on that power that is behind Elijah's prayer. His prayer was one that was simple, but yet bold, and it had authority. And through the words that he spoke, it released a power that allowed him to overcome the situation he was confronting in this moment. It was just a simple prayer that he said, Lord, Open his eyes that he may see. And he was referring to the servant that was with him. And you know, how many times have we prayed a prayer just like this before the Lord? We pray for our loved ones or someone we have come into contact with or someone who has entered into the church and, and they ask for prayer, for guidance, for, for instructions, for their eyes to be open. And we ask God, Lord, open up the eyes of the blind because Whatever situation you're confronting, you want to see it beyond what the physical eye is showing you. You want to see it in the spirit. And that was what happened. That's what was happening here with Elijah. Elijah knew that God was with him. Elijah knew that God will come and have his back. But the servant that was with Elijah, he didn't see what he saw. The Bible also says that the king of Syria has sent horses and chariots and a great army to the city where Elijah was, which was in Dothan. And they surrounded that place at night. Whenever there is a mention of chariots, a great army, horses, you know that those soldiers who have been sent out, they're coming to fight. They're coming to wage war. They're coming for a victory. So, You have to also learn how to prepare yourself in battle. You have to know that God, when he allows you to go into a battle, you have to trust in him. Psalms 20 verse 7 says, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord, our God. When you go into a battle, remember the name of the Lord, your God. His name is above every other name. He is the Lord of hosts. He is powerful. He is sovereign. He is in control over all things. He's the creator of the heaven and the earth. There is absolutely none like him. He is the ruler over all things and nothing compares to him. So when you understand that the one who called you, the one who has your back, the one who separated you, the one who watches over you, even when you sleep, because the word of God says that he never sleeps nor slumbers the one who protects you says that in deuteronomy 31 8 he is the one who goes before you he will be with you he will never leave you nor forsake you do not fear nor be dismayed because god watches over you in this chapter here of second kings chapter 16 in verse 15 it says and when the servant of the man of god arose early and went out There was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots. And his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? This servant panicked. He says to Elijah, who is called the man of God, what shall we do? I want to repeat that again. What shall we do? 
<laughs> the servant had seen with his physical eyes the enormous army that was surrounding the city, that was surrounding Elisha, and he was afraid. And he most likely thought for certain, hey, we're going to die. <laughs> but God, you know, don't you love when you read the Bible and you come across a verse and it says, but God, Genesis 50, 20 says, but as for you, you meant evil against me, but God meant it for good. Those short words, but God are powerful throughout the scripture. When you come across those words, but God or but Christ or but something, something was lost, but now it's found. Someone was dead, but now is alive. A person was blind, but now can see. There was no way, but God made a way. That tells me it's not over. It wasn't over for Elijah. The servant saw the physical army surrounding them, but because of the man of God who prayed, this servant's eyes were about to see fire in the mountains, which represents the power of the almighty God. There was a physical army there, but also one more powerful that could not be seen with the physical eye. It was a mighty and powerful army sent by God. This servant might have thought that it was over, but God showed up and I give thanks for those men and women who pray who spend time on their knees who spend time on their feet whatever posture position you pray in those simple prayers those prayers that reach the throne of God and God inclines his ear to hear the voice of his people crying out or saying Lord help me Lord send help those bold prayers that are filled with power and authority the prayers the power that lies behind it that brings forth such a humbleness before God to show him how much you trust in him, that you rely on him, that you believe in him, that you are working together with God, with his power. power because of your prayer, it helps develop a relationship with God. In prayer, you receive your answers, you receive direction, you receive guidance, you receive instructions. In prayer, it strengthens you and you learn how to exercise the authority which God has given to you. We have to learn how to exercise in our prayer. You know, we exercise when we want to lose weight and we make all these regimens and all these things that we want to come up with. I'm going to eat healthy. I'm not going to eat this. I'm going to stay away from this. And we begin to work on our bodies. We begin to tone up. We begin to build up our muscles. But if you take your time and you learn how to exercise in your prayer and you learn how to exercise the authority that God has given you, that when you open up your mouth and you declare something, you proclaim it, you decree it, you believe that what you are asking of the almighty God, that he will answer you. God is never late. He is always on time. We must all learn not to panic or worry like this servant did. There are battles, yes, they're going to arise. There is a war that is waging in the heavenlies and some we don't even see. But one of the greatest weapons that has been given to us is our prayer. Another weapon that we have lies in our mouths. Proverbs 18, 21 says, the tongue has the power of life and death. If you took the words out of your mouth to use it to build someone up, you can also tear them down. But if you take those words and you use it in prayer and you declare the goodness of the living God and you ask him, Lord, open up the eyes so they may see because many need to have an encounter with God. Many need to know that God is real. You will see what Elijah saw and that's why he prayed for this servant and God heard him because in verse 18 of this chapter it says that the Lord he striked this people and he he prayed he prayed that God will blind them. That same blindness that was upon his servant now was upon the enemies. And they were able to get, gain the victory. That blindness that God placed upon him, it was no longer there. He could see. He could see the power of God. He could see the fire that was in the mountain. That fire that re represents the power of the almighty God. There is power behind your prayer. The simple ones. The ones when you just cry out to God and say, Lord, help me. 
God sends help. Even though there was an army encamped around them, the Lord God Almighty, the Lord of hosts, he encamps angels around those that fear him. And this morning, I pray, I felt it in my heart this whole week. I felt it even strong in this morning to just pray a simple prayer. And I pray in this morning that the Lord begins to awaken you to pray, to build your relationship with him, to exercise your authority, that when you open up your mouth, there is power of life and power of death that we speak forth. Let us speak life into every situation that we face. Let us speak life that we may see the mighty hand of God move upon our situations like never before. And if you have to wait for a time because you've been praying and praying, so be it. But when God shows up, oh, but God. God, he sends help and he will surround you like he did in the days of Elijah, where they saw fire on the mountain, where they saw the mighty hand of God move. So I pray in this morning, you see God's hand move that in your simple prayers, you don't give up, but you continue pressing on and seeking God like never before. I have felt it in my heart and I felt the need to just share that with you in this day those simple prayers don't think they are they are in vain you are talking to God Almighty, you are talking to Adonai, Yahweh, the one who created the heaven and the earth, and he is hearing your prayers. So no matter the army that encamps around you, no matter the battle you're facing, no matter what war is rising up, know that God goes before you. God surrounds you with his presence, and he sends help where help is needed. God bless you. Have a wonderful week in the Lord. Amen. Stay in prayer. Prayer is powerful.